Hey guys, um, welcome back to my channel. It is officially spring and um, fishing is starting up. The ice is finally melting off, lakes and stuff, and the insects are hat hatching. So, damselflies, chronomids, those are all very important now. And so I decided I would invent a new damselfly imitation to cover the damselfly hatches that are happening in the happening in the lakes. I hope this um, pattern is successful for you guys out on lakes. I know it'll work well for trout, and it'll definitely work well for panfish, as they'll eat just about anything. So, um, thanks for watching, and enjoy this. We'll start off with this size 12 hook in 2x length. Um, I use size 12 for panfish and some and stock trout. Um, if you're using it on wild trout and lakes, I would suggest going down to size 14 because a little smaller it matches the damselflies better, but whatever. Tying the thread, clip it off, make sure it's nice and tight, and lay the good foundation. Because now we are tying in the marabou. For the tail, I use all of the marabou, um, measured in at um, a hook shank length. That's a good length for most tails on any flies I do with marabou. It's too short. To, it's short enough that it discourages um, short strikes, but it's long enough that you get all the mo movement and everything. Tie that in really nice and good. The back of the fly, um, trim off a couple extra fibers. Don't cut them. The fibers going off the end, do not cut them. Always pluck them. It looks so much better. I see so many people that just cut the tail. That just ruins any action and just makes the fly look funny. Don't do it. Okay, so now for the ribbing, we'll tie in some um, green flash. I prefer using flash to floss or, um, not floss, um, tinsel, because tinsel I find is thicker and um, it leaves less space in between. So I tie in just normal flash. So green flash is tied in, that'll be the ribbing. And next we will tie in some dubbing. Um, I prefer to use ice dubbing. Um, all of ice dubbing because it's um, a little more buggy and it's got that flash to it that fish really like especially in darker water so it's just really good tie it in nice and thin because obviously damselflies are thin they are very skinny bugs tie it in just past half halfway on the hook shank because we've still got the um, room for the legs and the head but this just makes the body look very buggy. I I can't get over how um, ice dub just makes this fly look like this. I bet UV dubbing would do the same. It's just nice and sparse and buggy. Wrap it in the um, flash to make the ribbing. And make the wraps nice and tight, not too tight, especially if you're using flash, because I've wrapped them in too tight and it snaps. But you wanna make sure it's tight. Um, clip off the excess after tying it in, and um, now we will tie in the mono. The mono filament I'm using, I think this is 10 pound test mono. Um, this will hold the two beads that I use to make this um, hook point up weedless basically. This is a newer way of making flies um, weedless. I really like it. Dumbbell eyes work really well. Um, I just hate tying them in. But yeah, so I, I make this and it looks pretty cool on this and it just gives that little bit of flash inside the legs when you're working on it. Okay, now flip over the fly. Now we've got the tail of the fly done and the body and the thorax need to be done right side up. So I'll flip your fl fly over and pull out some pheasant tail for the wing case. I use about 10 fibers. 10 fibers is enough. I'm tied in right at the base of the, um, the thorax. 
Fox uh, dummy, whatever you want to call it, um, tie it in nice and tight. Spread it around with your thumb a little bit to make it um, wider because you do want a thick um, wing case for your fly. This helps keep the legs um, in your place when you put the hackle legs in. Next, I tie in a piece of hackle. Um, use sparse, webby hackles because you want them to move and fluctuate in the water. So, um, hen hackle works really good. Um, some softer saddle hackles work well. Just a hackle that's nice and webby and tie that in. But you gotta make sure on this fly that you leave a lot of space for the head. That's just because you gotta tie that mono in back, back in you need to leave space. So you notice I leave a good bit of space between the hackle and the eye of the hook. Tie in your hackle and do some tight wraps to kind of push the hackle fibers facing back instead of straight up or forward. And this kind of gives it a swept back profile that looks really cool. Um, pull. Um, separate your hackle fibers before you pull over the pheasant there. Um, if you lick your fingers, actually don't lick your fingers, wet your fingers with something else. Don't lick your fingers. Um, anyways, that helps um, keep the fibers from going all over. And just kind of push them to the side and fold over the pheasant tail fibers. This forms the wing case and flatten down, flattens down the um, hackle fibers. And this is finishes the profile for this fly. It's just a really cool fly. Um, anyways, tie those in nice and tight and um, trim the excess off the front. And now um, you might have a couple of random fibers sticking out a little hackle or stuff like that. Just trim them off for aesthetics, honestly. Functionally, you wouldn't have to do that, but I do it because I take pride in my flies. So, <laughs> tie them all in nice and make the head nice and clean. Then you will take um, two beads, just the normal beads that you put on a nymph, like um, titanium beads and stuff like that. Not titanium, tungsten, not titanium. If you have titanium beads, wow, you, you're doing good. <laughs> put two of those on the monofilm nymph. What I do is I take the monofilament and I stick it up through the eye of the hook. That kind of keeps it in place while I try and wrap um, it down to the hook shank. And that just keeps it more stable and keeps it down on the bottom. So tie in your monofilament and make sure it's tied really nice and tight. Before you get too far to, towards the head of the fly, push the mono back out through the eye of the hook and then trim it off. And then do several wraps to make a nice head. Um, I was using black thread. You can use olive. Olive would probably be better because then you've got an olive head. But I just use black. It honestly doesn't matter that much. But especially if you're fishing for picky trout, I use olive thread instead of black. So that's, that's about it. Now you just whip finish the fly. And um, yeah, that's, that's the fly.